67 Celtic News YouTube channel. This video is going to be a video about the Celtic FC women's side, the Celtic girls, and so if you don't follow the Celtic girls, uh, this video is, may not be for you. Um, however, there, is, uh, there are a lot of videos in the back catalogue, and there will be another video later today or tomorrow depending on Celtic news. Today's video is going to be a post-match review of the Celtic women's side's 2-0 loss uh, yesterday evening at the New Douglas Park in Hamilton against FC 20 women in the first game of the Women's Champions League group stage. Uh, we're going to have a wee look at the game itself, the chances, uh, some stats, uh, and my own thoughts regarding how Celtic played and what the prospects are for the last five of the Champions League group stages with uh, away trips to FC20, Real Madrid and Chelsea and home games against Real Madrid, Chelsea as well. Real Madrid game will also be at Hamilton and the Celtic-Chelsea game will be at Celtic Park. Before we do crack on with the video, please do if you are new to the channel and you like the video, like the coverage of women's team and the Celtic team in general, please do click that subscribe button. A nice number of new subscribers yesterday, which was very, very cheering uh, after the disappointing 2 nothing loss. If you do like the video, please do click that like button. It does help with YouTube analytics spreading the word regarding the channel and the Celtic women's side to more football fans, Celtic fans. Uh, comment section open for your own thoughts regarding yesterday's game, who played well, who didn't play so well, what you thought regarding Celtic's formation and tactics, and any other relation, uh, um, issue related to the women's team with this being a Celtic girls uh, video. Last night was a historic night for Celtic football club and the first Scottish women's football with Celtic becoming the first ever Scottish team to reach the group stage of the Women's Champions League um, and so a massive achievement for all the women and the backroom staff at the club. Um, massive um, £420,000 check also for um, the club and also £17,500 for all the other 11 Scottish Women's Premier League clubs, although rather disappointingly, from uh, Kelly Clark and Elena Sidiku's uh, press conference on Monday evening. Um, there haven't been any uh, expressions of good luck or well done, etc., from any of the other Scottish women's clubs, uh, according to what they were saying in the press conference, which is a wee bit disappointing given the fact that um, Celtic have won them £17,500 as part of a UEFA um, scheme to compensate uh, the other SWPL clubs, potentially, I would guess, for having their fixtures rearranged and changed at short notice, etc. Anyway, on with the game. Uh, well, I was a wee bit surprised to see Celtic lining up in what appeared to be a 3-4-2-1. Uh, Morgan Cross and Murphy Agnew behind Sorsha Noonan with Shannon McGregor in uh, central midfield uh, beside Natalie Ross with Celia Barclay slightly um, surprisingly on the left in the Lucy Ashworth Clifford role and Emma Lawton on the right with the now usual current back three of Bruna, Kelly Clark and Caitlin Hayes and of course Kelsey Doherty in goals. I have to say I was a wee bit surprised to see um, Celia Barclay line up on the left as the wide left player. It would appear that Lucy Ashworth Clifford had some fitness issues that restricted her. Um, 
Emma Lawton's actually done a very good job down the left, um, often uh, swapping from right to left since she joined the club around a month ago. Um, and I think possibly actually with Sula Barclay being on her natural right side, Emma Lawton on the left, that might have worked better. Although um, I would like to have seen uh, a bit more pace out left with Maria McEnany, um, or even using Murphy Agnew as a wide left player uh, and getting her to come in as an inside forward. However, a uh, bit surprised also to see Morgan Cross up front. Uh, did look like the intention was that Noonan would be a target player and Cross and Agnew would work in midfield and join her in attack. Um, although quite often it seemed to be Murphy Agnew was the one left up at the front and uh, Noonan and Cross in midfield. It didn't really seem to work um, in the quite often when Celtic needed uh, a player in the box. There wasn't anybody in the box to take the cross and a couple of times it was Noonan or Cross out wide and Murphy Agnew was slightly crowded out uh, due to the fact that she's that wee bit weir and smaller. also do think that possibly Celtic may have been better to have had one of their conventional midfielders, such as Senior Carsons, or more likely Colette Kavanagh beside Natalie Ross in midfield, um, to try and take control there, and uh, pushing uh, Shannon McGregor up to the attacking midfield role with... Uh, what uh, two of Noonan, Cross and Agnew up front, given that Kit Lefersky is out injured yet again. We'd be interested to see yourself what you felt regarding Celtic's starting formation, starting lineup, uh, but I just felt that it did give FC20 control of the midfield, did mean that Celtic didn't really have enough people in the attacking third um, when we did get the ball forward. Uh, quite often when the defence was clearing the ball there was no one uh, there to receive the ball at the half we allowed to get the the ball up the other end and it did feel as if Celtic seemed to be lacking one player in midfield and one player in attack um, and there didn't seem to be the same fluidity and interchange of players and also I think it was very Significant that Caitlin Hayes very, very rarely managed to get herself into the middle third or final third and spent the great majority of the game in defence, apart from coming up for corners and free kicks into the box. To be fair to Celtic, they defended very well, they battled very well, they gave 100% of effort. I can't fault them in any ways for that. They did an incredibly good job and I think the club and the fans should be very, very proud of them. I think they gave, as I said, 100% effort. One can't fault them in any ways. They were playing against a much more experienced team, um, several uh, full internationals, multiple Dutch age group internationals throughout the team. Um, and they also had significant quality coming off the bench. Um, overall, FC20 seemed a faster, taller, stronger team. Um, and had, I think, a uh, couple of very, very good players in Kaylee Van Durin, who scored two goals, and Danique Van Ginkel, their uh, captain. Um, but they actually seem to have quality in all areas of the field, plus, as I said, strength coming off the bench. Celtic defended very well, but unfortunately were caught a wee bit um, exposed. Long high ball over the top in behind Clark and Hayes. Van Duren used her pace to beat them to the ball. Um, and the ball landed just in that difficult area of where Kelsey Doherty could have come for it or could have retreated. Van Duren did. Um, uh, a wonderful lobbing finish, beating Kelsey Doherty, who was slightly stranded between uh, the penalty spot and the six-yard box. Either way, I think there was very little that Kelsey Doherty could have done um, to save it. Singled, uh 
way to end the half, that goal being in the 44th minute. Both teams kept themselves the same at half time, no substitutions, and actually uh, there were no real substitutions from either side until around the mid 70s. Then there were a string of substitutions by both Celtic and uh, FC20. Celtic did have a few chances during the game. Uh, Cross, Noonan, and Agnew all did miss good chances. On another day, those ball, those shots do go in. Kelsey Doherty had a couple of good saves. Right at the end of the first half, there was a bit of a goal mice scramble, and the Welsh goalkeeper Price um, did very well to save and scramble the ball away at her back post. But overall, FC20 were the better team. They got their second goal again through Kaylee Van Duren. This was in the 85th minute. Um, something a wee bit exposed down the, the left side of their defence. Um, space in behind Bruna and Maria McInerney, who'd come on as a sub on the left-hand side. A ball in from our left byline into the middle and Van Duren took a nice first touch and then slammed the ball high above Kelsey Doherty into the goal. 2-0 down, I think probably. Had Celtic got away with the draw, that would have been a fair result. But I think just that little bit extra quality from FC20, that bit more experience, that bit more experience at the highest level. Although this was the first time they've been to the uh, group stages of the Women's Champions League. They are nine-time Dutch champions and they have been into the last 16 of the Champions League on three occasions um, when it was a knockout rather than a group stage competition. So Celtic then go on to their next match, which will be away at Real Madrid. That'll be on the Thursday. That's also going to be live on DAZN. Don't know if it's going to be live on any other channels, but it will be uh, available on DAZN. Just going to have a wee look at some of the stats. Um, possession for Celtic was 28%, for FC 20, 72. Shot, Celtic had 10 shots, FC 20, 12. Uh, Celtic had three shots on target, FC 20 had six. I think that's quite a telling stat, that although the shots were much the same, uh, FC 20 had, had so much more possession and were so much more efficient with their shots. Celtic five off targets to two uh, by 20 block shots. Celtic had two shots blocked and um, FC20 had four shots blocked. Saves were four by Kelsey Doherty and three by Price in goals for FC20. Celtic had a surprising 20 touches in the box to FC2017, again showing that FC20 were much more efficient when they did get the ball in and around Kelsey Doherty's box and eight corners to five, and probably Celtic's best chance of scoring was from a corner. Two or three times we did get the ball into the box and troubled the FC20 defence and goalkeeper. And as I said, uh, Price, their goalkeeper, did very well to scramble away uh, a header uh, and rebound at her far post just before half time. I think, to be honest, this was Celtic's best chance of getting points in the Champions League. I think, however, with a wee bit better efficiency in the FC20 box, Celtic could easily have drawn or even won this game. I think the games against Real Madrid and Chelsea are going to be considerable step up in class. Um, that would be us playing against Chelsea, the number three in Europe, and Real Madrid, who are eight in Europe. And both teams are full of Superstar players, I think the main things to take from last night's match and the next five matches will be the uh, massive amount of experience that the girls will be getting at the highest level. I think the £420,000 of UEFA money also uh, could be used very importantly to upgrade that squad. Um, yet again, I would be looking for maybe... Uh, strong controlling midfielder and a good goal scoring striker um, as much as they like Noonan and Cross and Gallagher and Agnew and Lafersky. Um 
we, I think, do need a, a player of really high quality up front to put away the chances. And so I would love to see Celtic getting in a real top quality striker and a real top quality midfielder in the winter window to um, maximise our chances of winning the uh, SWPL yet again and adding a cup, of, a cup or two and then getting back into the Champions League group stage in the 25-26 season. I think if Celtic used that £420,000 wisely, um, they could become a very dominant force in Scottish football and little by little become more and a more of a force in uh, European women's football. Um, and I think Elena Sadiku and her backroom staff and the core of this team um, very much um, have the talent and the skill uh, and the mental fortitude to do that. Finally, just looking at the players, I thought who played especially well, I think um, my player of the match for a Celtic player would go to Emma Lawton. Uh, great industry down the right-hand side, tackled back, she was uh, in all three zones, um, defended very well, fought for the ball in midfield, used her pace out wide, some nice crosses, some nice, br nice breaks into the box. Um, and for me, she probably would be my player of the match. Uh, Caitlin Hayes, Kelly Clark, both had very good games, as did uh, Kelsey Doherty. We, we, were, we were a wee bit vulnerable down our left-hand side with Bruna and Celia Barkley, and then later Bruna and uh, Maria McEnany. Don't think Shannon McGregor and Natalie Ross had their best games. They didn't really get uh, control of the midfield. Uh, I wasn't massively convinced that Noonan, Cross and Agni worked as a threesome partnership. Um, and as there seemed to be a wee bit of confusion regarding whose role was which. Um, and as I said, at times there was that lack of support in the box when Celtic did get a bit of um, progress down the right side or the left side. That finishes off um, today's video about the Celt Celtic FC women's side. Um, they'll be back in action again on Sunday against Hearts. Uh, potentially a very difficult game. At the same time, our two other big rivals, Glasgow City and Rangers women, will be playing. And so it does give Celtic a chance, if they do beat Hearts on Sunday, to push themselves up nearer the top of the table. Just to finish off, we polite reminder and encouragement. If you are new to the channel um, and like the video and the general content of the channel, please do click that subscriber button. Keep the numbers pushing up to 1,050. Um, if you like the video, please do click that like button and comment section. Open for pleasant, polite uh, comments, thoughts, opinions on the team's performance yesterday, the formation, who played well, who didn't play so well, and what you feel our prospects are for the next five games of the Champions League group stages between now and mid-December. And so until the next time, uh, goodbye and hail, hail.